This video presents the MTA or methods, techniques, and activities that promotes cooperation and group work skills among high school students. The video outline is hereby presented. First part encompasses the scope of cooperative learning. This includes rationale, definition of cooperative learning, and the reason why it is necessary to use. This is strategy in teaching social studies. The second part presents two methods that promotes cooperation and group work skills among students. This includes the jigsaw and problem-solving methods, list of related links that comprises sample lesson plans, activities and videos are also presented in this part. Finally, the third part comprises the references used by the researcher. Cooperative learning in the context of social studies teaching. The method of teaching could be regarded as the vehicle through which a message is delivered. The teaching method comprises the principles and methods used for instruction. The choice of an appropriate teaching method depends largely on the information or skills that is being taught, and it may also be influenced by the attitude, aptitude and enthusiasm of the students. The conventional methods of teaching could be regarded as the heater to existing traditional methods of instruction in the normal classroom setting. There exist several methods of such conventional methods of instruction which, has, which have permitted our educational system over the years. Instructional methods are used by teachers to create learning environments and to specify the nature of the activity in which the, t the teacher and the learner will be involved during the lesson. While particular methods are often associated with certain strategies, some methods may be found within a variety of strategies. Among such conventional methods include, include the lecture method, dramatization method, Montessori method, inquiry method, among others. Among the conventional methods of instruction, no method could be said to be most appropriate. Rather, classroom experience showed that in most cases, two or more teaching methods are combined by the teachers in classroom practice. What students learn depends not only on what they are taught, but also how they are taught, their development level, and their interests and experiences. This belief requires that much closer attention be paid to the methods chosen for presenting materials. With a given array of tradition of teaching methods, there is still a need to search and incorporate modern instructional strategies in our fast-changing educational environment. The last decades of research in new and in human learning have presented new insight into the ways that learners are active in constructing their own understanding. Constructivist learning theories have shown the limitation of viewing learning as something we can give to students that they will receive or learn in exactly the same form at exactly the given time. It is high time to highlight cooperative learning as a teaching strategy that will foster student achievement and growth cooperation and group work skills. Walk through any ed educational environment from preschool to post-secondary and you are bound to see samples of cooperative learning in action. Cooperative learning is applied in a wide range of settings with all age groups in diverse disciplines. In present day, social studies classroom cooperative learning appears especially frequently in a wide variety of forms. The, for, the popularity of cooperative learning methods in social studies classrooms is due to their effects on the social development of students. In addition to strengthening and expanding student grasp of formal curriculum, they, they impact active outcome inherent to social studies, outcomes beyond curriculum mastery. Rationale 
So, social studies as a discipline has been seen as a prime discipline adapted to socialize our young and function as a mean of promoting progress towards the major social education goals that have been identified for emphasis. Civic duties or development of citizen participation skills, acquisition of desirable attitudes and values. The scope of social studies therefore varies depending on the level one wants to cover. Its scope involves determination of what aspect of various constituent content would be most valuable for the realization of the objectives of social studies. It is therefore obvious that social studies is by its very nature a dynamic discipline by which it is wide and cannot be expected to be distinct boundaries. The scope certainly covers both immediate and distant environment in content and methodology. The equisite and transfer of knowledge requires some educational strategies. Teacher who teach social studies content through cooperative instructional strategy promotes learning because such strategy produces greater academic learning and better intergroup relationship among diverse ethnic and ability groups. According to Johnson and Johnson, cooperative learning is promising new educational approach. A social studies teachers need to acquire competence in his approaches to the teaching of social studies. These competences include content competence, competence in transmitting the content to the learner, competence in the in the use of variety of instructional strategies, and competence in evaluating instruction. The teaching and learning processes involve some methods and means of enhancing meaningful learning through the use of instructional resources. Cooperative learning is defined by a number of educators and theories. Cooperative learning pertains to the instructional use of small and large groups in which students work together to maximize and gain from each other. In cooperative learning, pupils argue with each other, assess each other's current knowledge, and fill any gaps in each other's understanding. In cooperative instructional strategy, there is a common goal and the achievement of the group determines the success of individuals. If the group does not succeed, individuals cannot succeed. Cooperative instructional strategy has become popular for many reasons. Cooperative in instructional strategies adds variety to the teacher's repertoire. It helps teachers manage large classes of students with diverse needs. It improves academic achievement and social development. It prepares students for increasingly interactive workplace. In other words, cooperative learning is a, is a teaching strategy that uses the synergy of groups to facilitate the learning of the individual. The class instructor, instructor orients the class as to the structure, the procedures, and the task at hand. The instructor then divides the class into groups and facilitates and oversees the class as the group work on their respective tasks. Within the group, the, the goal is to complete the task with all the members contributing what they can do to the task. And finally, with all the members understanding the material covered by that particular assignment or activity. Cooperative learning as teaching strategy develops us a social support system for students. Cooperative learning promotes student-faculty interaction and familiarity. The collaborative process enables a teacher to move around the class in order to observe students interacting. An opportunity is created whereby the teacher can talk to the student directly or in small groups. Teacher may raise questions to help direct students or explain concepts. In addition, a natural tendency to socialize with the student on a professional level is created by approaches to problem solving and about activities and attitudes which influence performance in class. Students often mention offhandedly that they are having difficulties outside the class related to work, family, friends, etc. Opening like this 
can lead to a discussion of those problems by the teacher and the student in a non threatening way because of the informality of the situation. Cooperative learning promotes positive societal responses to problems and fosters a supportive, supportive environment within which to manage conflict resolutions. Research shows that, co that cooperative learning reduces violence in any setting. Cooperative learning is mentioned in aggression studies but not promoted heavily because non-coercive pure cooperative learning model Nonviolence eliminates fears and blame, increases honors, friendliness, quality, and consensus. Process is an important as contest and as content and goal. Cooperative learning takes time, time and time. Facilitators have done the personal work that allows sharing of power, service to the learner, and natural learning finds cooperative learning a joy. Community building is perceived as a threat to those in control paradigm. Cooperative learning fosters and develops interpersonal relationships. The reliance on base group to help individuals keep track of each other's performance, the interdependence created by self and group assessment and improvement techniques, and the social nature of collaborative learning processes all combine to improve interpersonal relationship among students. Corrupt. Collaborative learning encouraged out of class work by the group, bringing them together in a combined academic and social experience which continues over long period of time. Featured in this video presentation are two methods that foster cooperation and group work skills among students, namely the jigsaw method and the problem solving method. The jigsaw method. The jigsaw method is where the students work together in small groups on specific academic tasks, assigned or class project. It is an excellent method not only for reducing classroom competition and increasing cooperation, but also for reducing classroom prejudices, if any exist, and improving social relations among students. The GISO technique what was developed and named in 1971 at the University of Texas, Austin by Elliot Arons Aronson, as a way for students in recent desegregated schools in Austin, to interact in the classroom in a way that would reduce suspicion and distrust. Arson has since written widely on the jigsaw technique, focusing on the benefits of jigsaw for reducing hateful behavior and increasing cooperation in the classroom. Since the 1970s, other educators have adopted and adopted jigsaw for, the, for use in wide variety of classroom lab field situation at all levels from grade school to, grad to graduate education. The jigsaw method has the following benefits. Firstly, students are directly, directly engaged with the material. Instead of having material presented to them which foster depth of understanding. Secondly, students gain practice in self-teaching which is one of the most valuable skills we can help them learn. Lastly, Chigso encourages cooperation and active learning and promotes valuing all students' contributions. The following techniques may be used in the Chigso method. Number one, divide students into groups with varying, varying abilities. Do not place all students with the same academic abilities into the same group. Number two, you will need to create a lesson guide for students to use. A great idea to try is an abbreviated outline. Have students divide their topic into two subtopics with three supporting points. Then, explain how to use and fill out the lesson guide. Number three, assign the materials or text that you will want to cover after you have placed students in other groups. Then, give each other a section of material or text to read and learn about. Each other's group in a, 
give each other enough time to read and understand the material, then have them prepared a lesson to teach the class. Number four, after that, have each, each group teach their lesson to the class. You can have students take base, basic notes or have some basic questions prepared to make some students understand all the materials covered. Hereby presented is a list of related links which comprise a sample video, activities, and lesson plans using the Jigsaw method. This link contains some lesson plans about social studies for the fifth grade. This classroom activity contained in this link made use of newspaper articles so that the student read the text, hear the text, master new vocabulary, paraphrase, and interact at all st stages of the activity. This activity contained in this link is created to encourage group cooperation. And lastly, in this, in this jigsaw lesson plan, students learn about the four different supported reasons behind the mysterious death that occur in early days of the colony of Jamestown. The problem solving method. Problem solving is a method that enables the student to think about a problem, try to understand the problem, and finally evaluate information in order to find solutions to the problem that has been identified. The method focus, focuses the learner's attention on activities which may involve arrangement classification, sorting, and interacting with facts with the ultimate goal of finding a logical answer to the specific problem. In 2006, Mayer defined problem solving as a multiple step process where the problem solver must find a relationship between past experiences and the problem at hand and then act upon a solution. Mayer suggested 
Characteristics of Problem Solving Number 1. Problem solving is cognitive but, but it is inferred from behavior. Problem solving, number two, problem solving is solved in the behavior that leads to a solution. Number three, problem solving is a process that involves manipulation of or operation of previous knowledge. Techniques in problem solving. The following techniques may be used in the problem solving method. List all related re relevant facts. Make a list of all given information. Restate the problems in their own words. List the conditions that surround the problem. And lastly, describe related known problems. Hereby presented is a list of related links which comprise of sample videos, activities, and lesson plans using a problem solving method. This link comprises of a lesson plan entitled Problem Solving in Social Studies, a Model Lesson. This model lesson follows the problem solving inquiry approach in social studies using multimedia techniques. This link features a short video about a problem solving, sol problem solving in groups. This strategy teaches students the skill necessary to work together successfully in small groups, both in classroom and later in life. Lastly, this link features StoryPad as a problem-solving approach in teaching social studies. Thank you for watching this video presentation and may have a productive day ahead.